Hello, this is Cathy from the Tasting Room in the Loire Valley. Did you know that the Loire Valley is the second most important sparkling wine region outside of Champagne? Well, we're very well known for great sparkling wine here, and we use the same method of production as in Champagne. We used to call it a long time ago Method Champenoise, but for quite some time now we've been prohibited from using that. So you look for the words method traditionnel on the bottle and that will indicate to you that it's been made in exactly the same way, in other words, with two fermentations and a second fermentation in bottles. You can make Cremant de Loire all over the Loire Valley, but the particular bottle that I want to share with you today was actually produced in Savagnier, which is an area probably best known for its very steely dry whites from the Chenin Blanc. You can see that tiny place there, Savagnier. It has its own appellation for dry white wines and some sweeter wines as well. They have um, a wonderful capacity for ageing. But this wine does not come under that appellation because it's a sparkling wine. But this is its area of production. It's about 10 minutes south of Angers and just north of the river. So this is the wine I would like to share with you. It's a Cremant de Loire from Chateau des Volts. And it's a Brut Sauvage. Now that's what makes it particularly interesting to us. When you see the words Brut Sauvage on the label, it means that it's not had any sugar added at the end of the production process. Normally when we're making a quality sparkling wine, the wine at the end, just before bottling, is quite acidic. So we tend to add a measured amount of sugar which will give us either Brut, Demi Sec or Riche in varying levels of sugar. Now this has had no sugar added, so as you can imagine, it's quite dry. Looking at the information on the back label, which is always useful to us as a consumer, you can see that the actual producer is Domaine du Clausel, who is very well known for making very high quality dry Savagnier wines. And it comes from 85% Chenin Blanc, which is originated uh, from Savagnier, and the remaining 15% is Cabernet Franc, which they've given to add a little bit of structure. And it tells us that it has spent several years pure lat, which means that it has spent some considerable time sitting in the cellars resting on its yeasty leaves deposit which adds all the flavours and complexity that make good quality sparkling wine so interesting. So what does it taste like? Well, it has a lot of Savagnier type characteristics. It has a wonderful sort of slightly honeyed pear aroma on the nose with a real grapefruit hint which creeps through on the palate and just a tang of bitterness in a very refreshing kind of way. The fact that it's been aged on its yeast deposit for several years and I don't know quite how long it's had but it's very evident on the nose. It has a sort of toasty quality which comes from comes from extended leaf aging. It's really very delicious. Now is it too dry? Yes it is very dry so you need to like a dry sparkling wine to really really enjoy this wine but because when you're producing dry wines in Savagnier, you're generally working with super mature grapes, which are capable of producing quite high alcohols, up to 13, 14, and even 15 percent. This means that the grapes are naturally higher in sugar, so the wine is not as dry and acidic as some wines which have had no dosage added. So I can highly recommend it. We enjoyed it as an aperitif on its own in the garden at the end of a long working day and it was absolutely delicious. I think it would also make a good match for seafood, mussels, crab, lobster, those kind of things, or something in a Merblanc sauce, something matching fairly high acidity with high acidity. But I can highly recommend it to you. We bought it recently and I think it cost 15 euros salador. So obviously that would be more expensive, it's transported over the water. But a very interesting sparkling wine and just something a little bit different.